Welcome to the series where I test out money making methods from the OSRS wiki. Feel free to leave suggestions on which money maker you'd like to see next. And also, if you didn't already know, I have a nice playlist that I've created that has all of the previous money makers that I've already tried. So go ahead and check it out if you haven't already. With that being said, let's get into the video. So for today's video, I thought we'd go ahead and do some Infernal Eels since a good amount of you have been asking for it. And I have done a Sacred Eels fishing video in the past before, so it'll be nice to compare the two. I'll be sure to leave a link to that video on the screen or in the description below, one of those two. And before we jump into the video, I just want to say we have hit 5,000 subscribers, which is just absolutely insane. I am very thankful for each and every one of you, and I am glad that you guys enjoy the content enough to subscribe. I'll definitely keep the series going, along with some other video ideas that I have planned for the future. Now with that being said, we can finally get back into the video, and it is important to note that for this moneymaker you will be needing at least 80 fishing, but of course 99 is recommended because the higher your fishing level, the more of these eels that you can catch. You will also be needing an oily fishing rod, some fishing bait, a hammer, ice gloves, and it'll be very helpful to have the rod is blessing 4 for that 8% chance of getting double fish, even though you don't get double XP for it. Now as for the full gear setup, I will be wearing the angler's outfit for an extra bit of fishing XP. Of course I am wearing the ice gloves as well because they are a necessity to be able to fish there. I am also bringing the dragon harpoon which is good if you don't already have 99 fishing so that you can boost your fishing level. I also have the rod is blessing 4 in the ammo slot. And then in the inventory I have the oily fishing rod along with the fishing bait and the hammer. And the reason I put the hammer there is because it's just fastest to break up the eels. I'll be able to spam click the hammer and the eel below it to break it up into the toggle and the other items that you receive here. Now it's also important to note that you do need to have completed the Tazar fight caves, meaning you do need a fire cape to show to one of the NPCs there to actually gain entrance to the area that we're going to be fishing in. So make sure you have that done. Having the easy Karamja diary done will also be of help because you'll get better deals at the shops in the Tazar area, meaning that you'll make more money. Now as for getting there, we will be using the fairy ring code BLP to enter the Tazar area, which will spawn us right here. And then you can just run north and northeast to pass the gate where you will need to show your fire cape. Once you've shown your fire cape to the NPC that's here, you can pretty much gain access here without having to bring it anymore. So if you haven't already accessed this area, make sure you do bring it for your first entrance. Now I do have to admit that I haven't really been here that much. I don't think I've done infernal eel fishing in the past, so I did have to bring out the map and see where I was going. But once you pass the gate, you basically just run south and you'll see the fishing spot on the map right there. I do think it's pretty interesting how we will actually be fishing in a lava. Seems kind of dangerous, but I mean, I guess for a master fisher, it's no problem. While you're running over here, you'll also spot some mining areas that people do tend to train in, surprisingly. Uh, again, I've never really been to this area, but this is where we will be fishing for the one hour. And it didn't take me long to notice, but this spot is actually pretty cool because compared to the area in Zalandra, you do have to move quite a bit, even though it is AFK over there. But here, you're just fishing in this small little area, so the spots really don't move too far apart. Also, unlike the eels in Zalandra, you don't need a cooking level for this method. In the sacred eel fishing method, you basically make money dependent on your cooking level. The higher your cooking level, the more scales per eel that you can get. But with this method, it is just reliant on your fishing level. So that might be a plus if you don't exactly have a high cooking level. You do however have to break up the eels more often because in your inventory there are more spots taken up by items such as the tokel, the lava scales, and the onyx bolt tips. Now I do gotta say that it was a nice change of scenery as opposed to fishing at sacred eels all the time. Whenever I'm AFKing I'm normally at the sacred eel spot and that area can get a little boring and dull with you know the surrounding swamp areas so looking at this red rock and lava was actually pretty nice. As far as future fishing training, whenever I'm going for the pet, I think I'll still stick to the sacred eel spot because it's a lot easier to get there. 
instead of coming to this area i have to take the fairy ring and then i have to run a pretty great distance to actually get here so i think i'll stick to sacred eels for now even though this is a nice spot now talking about the fishing pet apparently it is a one in 160,000 drop here at infernal eels as opposed to the 99,000 drop at sacred eels so who knows maybe i'll go ahead and buy 99,000 dark fishing bait Try my luck at Sacred Eels, and if I use all of the bait, then I'll try my luck here at Infernal Eels. Now, something to consider whenever we're going to be calculating the price of all the loot that we got is the Tokol. There's not really a value attached to the Tokol, but I will be adding coins in place of the Tokol, as if we were buying an Onyx. Now, obviously, we won't have enough for an Onyx, but I will calculate how much it converts over to GP-wise. I still have plenty of Tokol in my bank from all of the fire cape runs that I've done in the past and I might actually have enough to buy an onyx but part of me doesn't really want to waste it on that I just prefer having the Tokol there stacking up in the bank. Similarly to the marks of grace and some of the unidentified minerals that I got from mining which everybody keeps leaving comments telling me to talk to that one NPC to turn it off basically you can talk to her and you won't receive any minerals anymore but with a recent dev blog that was posted on the RuneScape website, they are polling a few questions, and two of those questions are actually regarding the unidentified minerals. Basically, it'll let us trade them in for some gem packs or some soft clay packs. So I guess it really was worth leaving those unidentified minerals on, even though I most likely won't even spend them if this question passes. But who knows, you never know. I might go staking again and lose everything and be forced to sell all of my unidentified minerals. But getting back to the video, you might be asking yourself why I haven't used the Dragon Harpoon spec, and that is because boosting past 99 does not actually do anything for you if you are outside of a guild. So if you're already 99 in a skill and you're not in a fishing guild or a woodcutting guild, then the boost will not do anything for you. But I still brought it with me just for the sake of showing you what gear setup you can bring and for the fashion scape. Now I do want to say that the Rada's Blessing 4 is definitely a blessing. It's really helpful and a lot of the times you will be catching double loot. So that'll just ultimately make you more money per hour. So I definitely recommend doing the diary if you have the stat requirements for it. And like I said earlier in the video, the placement of the hammer is there so I can break up these eels really fast. You can also break them up automatically by just clicking on the hammer and clicking on one eel. Your inventory will basically clear out the eels for you, but it's much slower than if you did it manually. And since this is such an AFK moneymaker, breaking them up manually really isn't that much of a pain. But if you wanted to maximize the amount of AFK that this is, then go ahead and let it do it automatically. And with that being said, we have finished our one hour of fishing at the Infernal Eels, and the total loot is 267,000, along with the Tokol that I will convert to GP in a bit. We can now go ahead and head over to the GE and sell off the loot that we got. I already have the coin stack in the bottom left of my inventory. That's the basic conversion for the amount of Tokol that I have. And I am selling off the Onyx Ball Tips along with the Lava Scale Shards. And I just put them in there for a low amount just so I could sell them off quickly. But again, if you are doing this moneymaker, make sure you sell them for mid or even a little bit higher than that. Total profit is 347,000, which is not bad for one hour of AFK fishing. So now we can go ahead and calculate how much money we actually made. We did spend quite a bit on the fishing supplies, which was 1,560 GP. If we subtract that from the total amount of money that we made, which was 347,407 GP, we get a grand total profit of 345,847 GP. Definitely not a bad money maker for how AFK this is. And as you can see, we did make quite a bit more than what the wiki suggested. The wiki has it valued there at 287 fish caught. We managed to catch 390, and that's not even including the double fish that we got for the Rod is Blessing 4. We also managed to get a decent amount of fishing XP. As you can see here, we got 37.9 thousand fishing XP for this one hour, which is quite a bit more than what we get at Sacred Eels. Now, if you saw my last video, you'll see that I am working with GE Tracker now. They did reach out to me and wanted to do some sort of little partnership type deal. 
So feel free to check them out. The link is in the description. And if you sign up with that link, it actually helps me out a bit. So yeah. And if not, that's cool too. I still appreciate you guys anyways. I just want to say thanks for checking out the video. And if you enjoyed it, please consider giving it a thumbs up and possibly a subscription. And as always, I will catch you guys in the next episode.